Hey everybody, this is Wes from the Console Gaming Crew Podcast, and we want to proudly say that we are a part of the Boss Rush Network at BossRush.net. BossRush.net is a place where you can find up-to-date news articles, blogs, and podcasts about video games. In addition to that, there is a growing collection of podcasts, not just in the gaming community, but other communities as well. We are honored to be a part of such a great network of podcasters and content creators. So please stop by and give everyone a listen at BossRush.net. Thank you, and enjoy the show. Yo, crew members, what it be? Hey, yo. Fuck yeah. Ah, so what is good, peeps? I hope everybody's doing well. Yeah, me too, man. I hope everybody's had a good week and is preparing to have another good week. Everybody's happy and healthy and their families are doing good and they're eating and they're working and they're getting money and playing video games. Especially the last part. Yeah, I mean... I, I mean, look, up. I mean, look, you can you can eat a few bags of Doritos and you know, I mean, in order to make sure you got money for video games. You know what I'm saying? I that mean, one. That's what matters. I mean, we're the con- I mean, we're not the crocheting crew. You know what I mean? We're the console gaming crew. Damn it. Do you know how to crochet? No, my grandma, uh, my grandmother did. My little sister it wouldn't, does. It wouldn't shock me if my wife does because she does everything else like an 80 year old. So and <laughs> when i say that she'll know what i mean i used to clown her forever before we uh before she even moved in before her and i were dating or anything when we were just friends i called her one night and i was like it was like i swear to god it was like eight o'clock i was like what are you doing? i was like what are you doing she's like um she's like oh, i'm just sitting and knitting watching jeopardy i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> i was like dang i mean so i mean the jeopardy all, part i can 100 percent get behind because i just, I, I love just, me some jeopardy we're just all the way 80 huh about to show me that AARP card. Yo, you about but, to get your uh, ass kicked, and you know it. Yeah, I know. But uh, nice I knowing you. Time, I tell her all the time, and she's like, "I'm gonna fuck you up. Like, you better kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna hit you. You better not. You better knock me out." <laughs> Welcome anyway. to Channel Ten News tonight. Yeah. Our story is domestic disturbance aside. <laughs> we got an episode for y'all that is just going to be some news. You will find out later as to why it's just news. There is a reason, and we will go over all that later. Yeah, we got a it's mighty it, fine announcement is, coming. Yeah, this is this is not this is not a situation where one of us fucked up and forgot something or a tech issue or none of that. It's just this was you know we actually flowed this this way. Yeah, we actually flowed this this way. So, without further ado, why don't we get into some news about the tiniest of Tinas? <laughs> Yes, so um, I got this article off of IGN. Uh, Ryan Leston is the one that wrote the article. And uh, Gearbox and Randy Pitchford and everybody are talking about how much of a major victory that Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is. So much so that they have made it, they have officially said that they are, they are working with future experiences already under development to continue the Borderlands spinoff. Now, that doesn't necessarily come as a shocker because when I was balls deep playing Borderlands with you guys, like when we were all playing together, like for a stretch and whatnot, yeah. we had said a million times, if there were ever a character that you could build another franchise off of, I mean, there's plenty that they have in the Borderlands universe, but the first one that would come to mind would be Tiny Tina because of just how off the wall she is. So I agree. I agree. It it doesn't surprise me that the game landed like it did, and it does not surprise me that they realize that they have another franchise in their hands. The only thing about it that I am slightly worried about is that they have been the DLCs lately have not been as good as what they should be. I mean, what what is your what is your gripe? Well, I mean, so is it the length? Is it the? I think it's. I think it's just the overall, just you know I mean, just the overall experience of how it's how it makes you feel. You know what I'm saying? Like in Borderlands 2, they were the best. DLCs all of the ball. DLCs, dude, yo, yo, they were on point. I mean, and was it three? No, 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 it was two that had um, you I mean there was Scarlet and all yeah, that stuff, the other right? Yeah, the pirate, yeah, the pirate yeah. one, and then all the, the seasonal ones that they had. And oh Tiny my god, Tina, and Tiny Tina's one that was like D&D, and you know basically. something? Maybe, maybe it was because it was new. It was because it was new and novice at that point. You know what I mean? With their DLCs to where, like, how much 
that that might have been the reason why I loved them that much. No, I don't necessarily. I don't necessarily because think, I think, the I DLCs, think it's a little bit different. The the first season DLCs in Borderlands Three were fine. I liked them a lot because because of like certain miles, you know, not necessarily milestones, but certain like equality things. You know what I mean? They they, they did like they did um Hammerlock get married and you yeah. know what I mean shit like yeah, you, you, you mean, like like you mean stuff like that. I thought was really cool, but it it just didn't they, they just didn't capture me as much as the borderlands 2 dlcs on top of the fact the second season to where they brought in the arms race great great thought what they wanted to do with arms race was an awesome idea they just didn't execute it properly they made it extreme they made it way too difficult to get to the end to be able to get like the badass guns that one aside because that literally sounds like a, a technical gripe in the way that they executed that the rest of them might just be because with two they set the bar so incredibly high on their dlcs okay nothing was going to match up to that at that point maybe yeah. i'm just saying maybe that's possible because they were very very good there were no dlcs for the first game correct or were there not I to my remember. knowledge i th um... no, cause i just i just remember playing the game over and over again on the next difficulty like true valhana mode all that stuff that's all yeah and then you the just game. grind the fuck out of it yeah yeah, so the, the second game, I believe, was the first one with DLCs, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, so, they mean, were incredible. So, like, Tiny Teenies Wonderlands, we probably shouldn't expect another game for the next probably three years, I'm guessing. Um, we're probably not going to see anything for Borderlands 4 if they decide to do that. Probably for another, like, two years. You know what I mean? Because they line this up for doing B3 and Wonderlands basically back-to-back -back year to year. So if they do it again that way, you know what I mean? It'll end up working well for the money-wise, I think. Yeah, which is shocking because did anyone expect that quick a turnaround after how long it took to go from two to three? No. And yeah, yeah dude, nobody, that was yeah. like, like that was super surprising. But I will say I did really, really enjoy the people that they brought in for like the voiceover in Wonderlands. Like that part was really good. And obviously, I mean, the fourth wall breaking type stuff was nice too. Yeah. I agree. All right. Um, I got a question for you. I might have an answer for you. God, I hope so. Do you remember how much people hated Cyberpunk? Yeah, I remember how much people hated Cyberpunk. It rivaled how many people hated No Man's Sky when it first came out. Yes. So, and I mean, you spend well, all that time. Actually, no, probably even more so because when No Man's Sky was coming out, nobody was billing it as like the biggest game of the year. They were billing it as a good game, but it never. It was never like. Oh, oh no, 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 no. They were. That was the With No Man's Sky. That, yeah, dude, yo, that was the, the one of the biggest things about that game was the fact that they built it as like this, this innovative next level exploration game right maybe, maybe and, they did i'm saying other companies like where how we how you had like uh you know other game companies saying you know like grounded for example saying you know wait for wait for cyberpunk if you want the game of the year like everybody was on pins and needles waiting about this game everyone every company thinks that their game's the game of the year so i would hope so me. and that you, doesn't you know what i mean in the very least but, but um so flat yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but wild enough dude there's a resurgence right now for this game i love i love hey and the land of second chances baby there is a <laughs> yo amen to that there is there's a lot of reasons why a lot of people are starting to jump back onto the cyberpunk train so you have the brand new anime that came out cyberpunk edge runners that's on netflix you have multiple updates that have come through the game and they actually have already announced the first major expansion um, which is actually triggering a lot of interest with this game. I do real quick want to go ahead and say, just you know, since I said it for the last one, I want to make sure I just line these up. Uh, Ryan Disdale and George Yang were the writers of this article that I picked up. Also from IGN. So, yeah, so um, a lot of this information keeps on coming out when um, Cyberpunk keeps on doing these, uh, these Night City um, little visits. And, uh, you know I mean, whenever they do, you know what I mean, they give us a little bit of information, you know what I mean, about like what they're trying to do, what they want to do. And look, I, I shut them down, dude. I didn't give a fuck about cyberpunk at all. Anymore. I really don't. But that could change. That could absolutely change because I have the game. What I was going to say was I almost wonder, I'm not necessarily saying it's the road that they should have taken, but I almost wonder if they didn't bother to try to fix anything in the game and just left it as fucked up as it was if eventually 
almost like some movies do if that game would have eventually become a cult classic because of how shitty and ridiculous those glitches were if it would be that game that ended up being beloved you wanted to go back and play it to see all the ridiculous stuff because think of how many movies you watch that are terrible movies they're terrible movies but they're like cult classics they're cult classics because they're so horrific yeah you're not wrong like there's nobody wrong. that there's nobody that I can't imagine if they do I would love to talk to them and just hear why I won't dispute it because people like what they like and I'm not that guy but I'd be hard pressed to assume that I'd find anybody that would would say that like the Super Mario Brothers movie was a great movie it was fucking terrible it was terrible but it's so unbelievably terrible that's why it's good and that's why you want to watch it I mean yo let's not forget this game got delisted on the PlayStation Network Store. And that was because the what they did was that they ran the game on PC, which made it, I mean, which looked great, but then they never did the proper updates or situations they had to for moving it from PC to console, which there is a lot of extra development yeah. in that. It's which, yo, I'm not taking anything away, you know what I mean, from that, because, yo, that that is a hefty, hefty job. There's a reason why there's PC games that will never become console games. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like there are certain ones we will never see. Back to my original theory, man. I'm telling you, book it. In 10 years, people are going to be flooding back playing Anthem. You watch. God, that would, yo, that would be, dude, yo, in like 20 and then years, after, we're going to be living it. You kidding me? And then eventually, and then probably... I'll say twenty years ago, our own javelins. After like three days of being back into Anthem, you're gonna hear people be like, "And I remember why the fuck I stopped playing this stupid shit." <laughs> I mean, but, it has no support anymore, so I mean, yeah. it doesn't even fucking matter. Okay. Actually, yo, I'm pretty sure it's still on Game Pass. I'm, I might turn that on and see what you mean, see what actually happens. Because there's, so dude, there's, there's no support for it. So yeah. you mean, and dude, it was like it was a multi-person online game. Like have, we flew have, around people all the time have thought that like the original world of warcraft would outlive a game from 2020 i'm pretty sure 2020 is when anything came out right no or dude was that was not no it's 2018 cause that, that was our first episode oh yeah touche very very touche <laughs> very very touche okay well, yeah let's let's keep that uh, this next article I have comes from Taylor Lyles, and uh, this one, I understand it, but I'm still upset because then I can't get a cheaper version to play the games. Because <laughs> that's exactly what I would do. I'm, I, assuming, yeah, I'm assuming you're, you're talking about some, some VR here. Yes, yeah, so Sony confirmed that the original PSVR games are not compatible with PSVR 2. No need to fret. Because I got two headsets. I got you. I got but I'll still fret. I'll still fret. There's no reason to fret. I won't have use for two of them anymore. So That's I'll true. let you mess with them. I'll let you rock one. That's true. Um, yeah, so uh, what this essentially means, because, I mean, this came from the uh, the official PlayStation podcast, and this was around the 29-minute mark. Um, Hidaki uh, Nishino confirmed that the PSVR 2 will not have backwards compatibility with original PSVR games. PSVR games are not compatible with the PSVR 2 because PSVR 2's design to deliver a truly next generation VR experience, Nishino said before explaining some of the noteworthy features exclusive to the PSVR 2, such as haptic feedback and adaptive triggers that are found on the sense controllers, which are the controls that you have in either hand. Yes. You know, I'm not necessarily mad at this, if, if the PSVR 2 really, truly does deliver a much different experience than the first one. And I'm not going to bet against them just because I did with the first one, and the first one blew me away from the second I put it on. <laughs> so, I won't necessarily be too mad. I mean, VR is still relatively new, so I don't know how hard it is to make that backwards compatible versus just like consoles being backwards compatible i, I don't mean know what goes at, into that at the same time like sony has created an adapter that allows you to play the original psvr games on a ps5 yes and we should make it known that that is free if you want it, it is not something you have to pay for yes if you contact sony they will send you one and which is fucking pimp dude that is awesome as it as it should be <laughs> but i mean it's yeah that's 
as far as what Sony's been doing lately. That's I mean, yo, refreshing. Yo, just listen to this real quick. So PSVR 2 won't be out until sometime next year. We already knew that. And multiple games have been confirmed to be in development for the headset. You ready for these games? Among Us VR already sounds insane. Wow. Uh, Ghostbusters VR. That, that could be insanely cool. <laughs> Resident Evil Village. No Man's Sky. Fe talk about No Man's Sky. The Resident Evil 4 remake, which is something that, you I mean, we've been talking about before. Uh, the new game, the first party, uh, Horizon Call of the Mountain, as well as a sequel to Firewall Zero Hour, have all been confirmed to be in development. That's so legit. That is Love it. It would probably um, never happen, but there are some games that would be so sick to play in VR. Ones that you wouldn't even think. Like, even... Did you ever play... I had the tra um not the trailer, I'm sorry, I had a, it was like a demo that I had for a little bit called Moss. Where you played as this tiny little mouse and you had to like navigate these puzzles, you're in like a jungle type area. No, but I don't think I did. Other so other games that I had, which makes sense for the VR, like a, the bulk of them were like first person things, which makes sense. You look around, you see the world. This game oh, yeah. was was third person. So you're in VR but you see the character and you see him moving around. So and hmm. it, and it's cool it's cool to see that. So that made me believe that like a game like Ori would be so sick in VR. Wow. So sick. Probably that never be, happened. Probably never happened because I don't know. You know that would be some next level shit. Next like that level would, shit. Would, just, that's why I wanted to try the Borderlands. Even if it's wonky and the controls don't work all that great, yep. just to see what the world looks like in it would be sick. Even if I just walked around and didn't even kill anybody. So it shocks me that I still haven't done that yet. Because <laughs> it's not that expensive either. Oh, no, especially not now. <laughs> um, next two stories I have are fairly quick. We're going to run through them pretty, pretty fast. So first one is going to be about Street Fighter. So Street Fighter 6, we got the full uh, roster at for the launch. Like I said, this one is very quick. Um, it is an 18 strong uh, person roster. And you know, I mean, we have some of the you know, ones that everybody knows, like Ryu, Ken. Um, we have Zangief. Uh, Dalsim, E Honda, Blanca, Guy, uh, Chun Li, Cami, Jerry, Luke, DJ, Kimberly, Jamie, Man uh, Manon, Marissa, Lily, and JP. I only know maybe 40% of the names on that list. More than me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so uh, we are getting Street Fighter 6, the closed beta will be happening between October 7th and 10th on the PS5 and the series in the Xbox Series S and X and uh, PC via the streaming. And um, you can sign up on Street Fighter's official website. I mean, if you actually want to try to run the beta, pretty sure that would... Eh. I mean, look, if that's your type of game, that'll probably be a blast. I was looking... I, I saw this video the other... Um, I think it was today. I think I saw it on Instagram. They had a comparison of the first Street Fighter game and now of how they looked and you know what I mean like just just the fighting sequences or like you know I mean just like one of the arcade versions like like Marvel vs Capcom or some shit and like how it looked oh, then to now dude it's, it's like it is so fucking different man it is so clean um this next games. <laughs> I don't because I do not miss getting my ass kicked so I don't miss those games just play against the computer I can't I don't play those I games still got my ass people. kicked Oh shit, yeah, I can't help you there. No, you can't. No one can. I keep on telling you, nobody can help me. Um, so next uh next story I have another one from Taylor Lyles. Wow, this guy gets around. Uh <laughs> we are going to be getting a teaser trailer for the new Super Mario game. The Mario Brothers film, which will be releasing April 7th of 2023. So October, you said, you, said, you said game and then you said movie. <laughs> Fuck. You said sorry. the new Super Mario game and I was like, wait, what? You Fuck. Mean, My bad. So, uh, New York Comic Con, the official Comic Con uh, uh, Twitter account sent out a tweet saying, "Join us October 6th at 4 p.m. Eastern time for a teaser trailer premiere of Nintendo and Illumination's upcoming Super Mario Brothers film, releasing April 7th, 2023." So they are doing this uh, the sixth. That is on a Thursday. I will be able to watch. I'll do it. I will watch that bitch yeah. live. I'm ex I'm excited for that. 
I'm excited for that. And I really feel like that's something that Chris Pratt can pull off. I feel like I they're I feel like they're going in a different direction with this game, which I'm completely fine with. Or game goddamn, I said it again. Yes, you did. Alright, that's it's, the title it's, of the, it's okay. It's that's okay. The title it's, of the episode. Just, it's not a game. It's 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 fine. It's just your brain reminding you that the other Mario movie was so terrible, how could they possibly want to make another one? <laughs> so you're like, it can't be a movie, it's just gotta be another game. Those are way more successful. Alright. So just to give y'all a quick recap of some of the actors that are a part of this movie, like Andy said, we have Chris Pratt as Mario. You have Anya Taylor Joy. Um, I believe she is from The Queen's Gambit. You know, I mean that show on Netflix that really everybody went crazy for. Yeah, she was uh, also she's gonna be playing Peach. Split. Yeah, she was also in Split. Yeah, uh, you very, have she's very good. You have Charlie Day from uh, Pacific Rim and Perfect. Always Sunny in Philadelphia. You better lead with Always Sunny. <laughs> what the fuck? I've never watched Always Sunny. But still, you know he's in it. And it's huge. Yeah. So yeah, he's going to be. Horrible Bosses. So, yeah. yeah, Horrible Bosses is another one. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be voicing Luigi. We have the illustrious and amazing Jack Black from Tenacious D, School of Rock, uh, Kung Fu Panda, um, Jumanji. Uh, he's Goose going to be Bumps. Bowser. Yes, Goosebumps. I forgot he is R.L. Stein. Uh, we have Keegan Michael Key from uh, Key and Peele. Uh, they're in the Toy Story 4 movie. He's going to be playing Toad, which is awesome. I the, love it. See, the only thing there for me, and, I, and I'm not mad at it. I'm going to let them do what they do, and I'm I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it. I feel for me, I don't know why I would have swapped Charlie and Keegan. I would have made Keegan Charlie Luigi, as Luigi, and I would have made no. I would have made Keegan as Luigi and Charlie as Toad. One Charlie's see, already short and spastic and all see, that type I'm not, of shit. I'm not mad at that thought because you already know that Keegan Michael Key knows how to knows how to play second fiddle. Yeah, but but can but can still hit the first fiddle parts. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's, in, so, he's incredible. Keegan Michael Key is incredible in like everything he does. Yes, he's hilarious. And we also have Seth Rogen coming in as the big old, big old dumb monkey Donkey Kong. Probably perfect as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, look, it's Seth Rogen, man. One of the biggest donors ever besides Willie Nelson. So. Yeah. And if only they could get like Jay Baruchel to be Diddy. Um, Diddy's not in the movie, I'm sure. But. Um, some of the other people that are going to be a part of this, you have Sebastian Maniscalco, who is a comedian. Uh, he's going to be playing a character named Spike. You have Fred Armisen, who it, it Fred Armisen is incredible. Dude has done a million things in the voice acting world. Um, damn, I can't think of anything right offhand though, unfortunately. Uh, he's going to be playing Cranky Kong. And then you have Kevin Michael Richardson, who is going to be Kamek. Uh, Kevin Michael Richardson, he um, he voices a million things. Um, like Static Shock was one of them. Uh, you know what I mean, he voiced like he voiced Virgil's father in that. He voiced uh, Joker in one. You know what I mean, in one thing that he's done in one of the Batman shows. Um, yeah, man. But that is that, look that that's going to end up being a. I think it's going to be a good movie. I'm not always a fan of how Illumination does their animation. Like the Despicable Me stuff is cute, but I can't watch it multiple times. Which ones? Uh, like Despicable Me, Minions, all okay, that type yeah, of shit. Yeah. But I just like, like I I can't watch that stuff that you know I mean that many times on repeat. As you know I mean as per other like you know what I mean comedy or not comedy but other cartoon movies that I can watch on loop and like never never get tired of. Yeah. yeah. All right. So last two articles we're going to talk about uh, both have to do with the same thing. Yeah, and this is a this is a big one. We got a big old breach in security. In the gaming world, at least. Absolutely. So, GTA 6, there have been a fuck ton of leaks on this game that just yeah. recently happened over the last um, over the last week. I think over, like, 90 videos? Yes. Or something were leaked? I think it's over 100, actually. Yeah, it was 90 when I first saw it, so that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> now, one of the things with, um, with this is that a UK teenager has been arrested in connection to these leaks. So London police kid. did get did get one kid. And um, this article that I'm looking at is from rockpapershotgun.com. <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> that is a great fucking thing. And the article was written by CJ Wheeler. Um, but yeah, so a lot of people have been like, 
I'm getting confused. And here's the reason why I'm getting confused. Now, number one, the leak happened. That sucks. I'm not, I don't condone that. But now since we've seen it, why is everybody so fucking mad about it? Like, number one, it is a leak. This is, this isn't even an alpha version. Because, yeah, because people are pissed. Like, they're literally thinking that these leaks are the finished game that is going to be right around the corner. Yeah. Which, which boggles my mind. This game is very, very on in development. If anything, anybody with a brain in their head should have taken from this that, like, this is incredible. Because for how early they are on, how early on they are in the process, yeah. it looked great. Yes, if that was the finished product, I'd be way disappointed. But I'm not an idiot, so I realize that they're not even anywhere close to being finished. They have to polish the shit out of that. And now, they know. Oh, yeah. Now, I mean, I've looked at a handful of uh, other videos that, I mean, that they've, like, IGN and a whole bunch of other companies have been putting up saying, look. Well, actually, you know, it's been other developers that have actually come, come to the defense of Rockstar. And what they've been saying is, look. Look at our development videos from before Alpha Stage to what's out now, and you'll see that what they're doing isn't all that crazy. Because like one of the ones I saw was Control, and yeah. looking at Control in the developmental stage looks a million times different. It looks so fucking janky, dude, in the develop, and which it's supposed to. Again, it is supposed to. The, I mean, the game is not supposed to look Game of the Year when it's fucking two years out. I mean, honestly, I yo, I like, I have nothing else that I can actually say about it because it's like, that shit drives me nuts. Yeah, it's like unless you are brand new to Rockstar and GTA, unless you are brand new, have you played a game before? Do they not do? Have they ever given you some like shitty product? No, they know what they're doing. This is what they do. <laughs> like, this is what they do, and this is why it takes so goddamn long for them to get a damn Grand Theft Auto game. Exactly because of how much they put into it. And how to like think about how big the worlds are in the GTA games. And this is going to be bigger. Yes. And you're going to be able to go inside places. Yeah, well, way more which, places it, before you look, could go into like you could go into like gas stations. I think in in five, and then like some clothing stores. That's yeah, and, yeah, yeah. In San Andreas, you can go into clothing stores, but and, and then there was that and one then, like your one that like you your, could walk in and then you end up on the roof. Yeah, and then like your character homes. Like, yeah, that's about it. But yeah, man. All right. So right now, I'm watching. I'm watching the video that I was talking about right now on IGN. That is it. The one with the chick like holding up the store. No, it's one to it's it, it's one to where they're comparing what um with control what we got in the developmental oh, stage compared because okay, yeah. literally it had boxes on it that said throw me. Yeah. In the developmental, it's like okay, yeah, because that's exactly like look, we know it's destroyable things. So let's go ahead and write on it that's destroyable. That makes sense. Like Jesus Christ. Like another one, Call of the Lamb. Which is, Call of the Lamb, they're going to win Indie Game of the Year this year. I 100% believe that. This game has taken Twitch and just streaming and everything else by storm. Um, but, yo, they're showing, I mean, they're showing their developmental stuff as opposed to what you got in the end. Same thing with Sniper Elite. You know what I mean? They're doing the same. Like, I, I actually, I appreciate more that the other developers are putting in so much more of, like, yo, Y'all need to calm the fuck down. Yeah. Like, our job is to make this thing. Your job is to play the thing. And then tell me how you feel after. Yeah, <laughs> like, Roger that. Shit. We don't, I don't need your input in, like, the, the, the alpha phase of this thing. <laughs> like, don't, don't need it. But, like I said, it's, it's going to be a great game, just like all the ones before it. Just pump the brakes, people. Pump the GD brakes. Matter of fact, I'll say it for you. Pump the goddamn brakes. That's it. That's it. So, this is the uh, this is the time where normally we would give you the the what are we playing, but we're not going to do that this time because we'd rather give you a what are we about to do. <laughs> about to give you a, I like that. I like how you did that segment. Now, Wes and I for a while have flirted with the idea of doing a Philly sports podcast. And damn it, that's what we're gonna do. So we don't, we have not nailed down a name yet. We have some ideas. We have one that's currently in the lead, but we're not gonna give you a name until we're one hundred percent sure that that's what it is. Yeah. But we are going to have a Philly sports podcast in a couple weeks. It will be, you know, it will be based around the four major Philly sports. But there will also there will also be some segments in there about you know 
other teams and stuff, you know, other things that are prevalent around the world of sports. And um, we'll make sure, you know, we'll have some we'll have some guests on and stuff like that. And it, it, it's going to be a good time. It's something we've wanted to do for a while. So we want to give us give ourselves the, the space to do it. And uh, so we are going to be putting the console gaming crew on the shelf for a bit. Now, listen to what he said. We're putting it on the shelf. For it's not bit. done. Is, no, it's not done. It is. It is not done. We have loved everything that we've done over the last couple of years and all the people that, you know, have listened and and, you know become uh, friends through this from, yeah through through this craziness um obviously we we thank and love every one of you guys and, and again you know, this this isn't the last of it we're just taking we're taking some time so we can fully explore this and you can let us know how you you know how you think about about the new podcast that we do and hopefully you guys like it and uh it'll be a different time we normally record these and drop them well we record these on saturdays and they normally get dropped on what Mondays, sunday night right? sunday sunday night. sunday night it used to be monday actually shit it used to take like a month but <sighs> I'm just I've gotten better. I've gotten better. But uh, yeah, we're gonna be <laughs> we'll be recording on Tuesdays moving forward. So you'll probably get it Thursday, maybe. Um, I'm I'm hoping Wednesday. I'm 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 hoping that. Look, we can iron this part out obviously later, but I'm hoping that they're not lo- not that long to where I, we can record and I can I can run it that t- that night right after we're done. Yeah, just I mean, West, just like I normally West, do here. Yeah, we are we are passionate sports people from a passionate sports town. <laughs> yes. So, you know, so this is something we've always wanted to do. So we're, you know, we don't want to be the what if people. So we're going to do it. Um, so again, this is not the last of the CGC. We will be back, um, but we will have, uh, we will have a new podcast soon. We'll have a new Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff set up. So you'll, you'll still have places to find. And we'll make sure we let and, every single one of y'all know. Yeah. And, and we hope you like it. <laughs> we yeah. do hope you like it. I mean, we're, it's something that we we're passionate about. You know, gaming isn't the only thing that we're passionate about. So, I mean, look, I like to be completely honest. I've had like two or three different podcast ideas in my head. You know what I mean? Over the last yeah. over the last few years. Yeah, so, no, be, is, I yeah, mean, being able to actually being able to actually do do this one, especially when like there is so much happening in this city right now. You I mean you have like. Here you go. We're kind of started right now. A little bit. Don't leading. don't start now. <laughs> no, but I know what you're saying. There's a lot going on in in the, in the sports world around here now. But you know, we wanted to fully be able to lean into this thing because you know I'd thought you know about doing them both or doing one one week and then one the next week. But then you're just going to get two half ass projects, which is never what we want to do. No, you know, and everything that we do, we want to be able to give 100 percent to ass. it, which is what which is what we have done to grow this in in, into what it is and you know now we want to do that with with this next venture so you will catch us in hopefully a couple weeks is is the plan hopefully you know in the the next couple weeks we'll we'll have our first episode out we got Um, we have a lot to create on this but i think we yeah we've we've got to iron some things out uh which we're about to do as soon as we cut these mics off (laughs) so Wes, why don't you uh, tell the people one last time? Well, temp- well, for now, for the last time, where they can find us. Actually, before Wes tells you where you can find us Scott! one last time, I do, I do want to shout out. I haven't actually told you this yet. I, I would actually like for you to listen. Um, a friend of mine that I play hockey with uh, and a buddy of his have a podcast that I started listening to. And it's actually cred- incredibly interesting. It's It's along the same lines as like the this you know what's your spaghetti policy and stuff like that there's no real okay they just you know they bring on guests they talk about their stories and stuff like that it's called the express lane podcast it's hosted by uh my buddy kevin haley and his friend nice. stan uh, express lane is one word it's not express space lane it's literally express lane one word so the express lane podcast um they're basically everywhere you get your podcast so check them out they've got you know they're i think i think he said that they're about a year in Okay. I think is is what he said, but he's I the first episode I listened to was uh Corey was on uh nice. buddy of mine who plays on the team he was yeah. on and, uh you know they're they're funny they have a lot of like fun interesting stories so you know if you got time check them out but uh, you know I told him I wanted to I will. shout him out on here so absolutely yeah so that's the Express Lane podcast so check them out so now now <laughs> I get to tell y'all where you can still connect with CGC because all of these avenues will still be open. No matter what, because I will still make sure I talk to all y'all. You can first hit us up on our website, which is consolegamingcrew.com. And we also have our email, which is consolegamingcrew at gmail.com. Our Twitter is at console crew, which is the place where you can find us and get to us the fastest. And I will get back to you the fastest. YouTube and Instagram are both console gaming crew. And as you heard in the beginning of this episode, 
bossrush.net. It is the greatest place where you can find anything video game related. You want consoles? They got it. You want PC? They got it. You want to talk about Switch stuff? They got it. Anything Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, all of it, yo. They're where you want to be. Boss Rush Network, bossrush.net. Be better. Even if we are doing the hiatus on this, we are not doing a hiatus on our Twitch. CGC Podcast is still going to be running strong and running hard, y'all. Co-op Monday night is still going to be going on. You have myself with my boy Mike from the Twisted Kate podcast, as well as Javier and Dan running four-player games. Right now, we are doing Zombie War 4. And then Fridays, it is either going to be a fun yeet Friday or a chill Friday or a freaky Friday. We're not sure yet. But when we know, you'll know. (laughs) So until next time, at least... Until next time, I mean, you ain't going to hear me to say this anymore. So please stay safe, wash your hands, mask up, do what you got to do to feel good, because that's what we always want for y'all. And as always, my people, number one, thank you. Number two. Game on. Game on, y'all. Be good. Peace.